What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the Boost Blades Smoke Front Flipper. It's actually a Blade HQ exclusive in carbon fiber, as I understand it. Uh, this knife was provided for review, lent to me for review by my good buddy Kyle Roberts, who also uh, lent me his um, his Hinderer Ranch Bowie, that large fixed blade. Uh, still safe and sound, Kyle. Thank you so much for allowing me to take a look at this. Really cool. This is a popular knife, and it's not one that I had looked at on my channel yet, so I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Um, let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. So overall, the Boost Blade Smoke and Carbon Fiber Coming in at exactly eight inches. Because it's so long and slender, it honestly, I seriously, I'm thrown off all the time. Some, so many people are better at judging size. I thought this is at least eight and a half inches. <laughs> eight inches overall. Uh, blade uh, length coming in at three and a half inches exactly. Blade cutting edge uh, looks to be about 3.3. So, like, so that's gonna hit a sweet spot for a lot of people. I am not aware of this knife being made in different sizes. It might be. I don't think that it is. I am aware of it being made in many different configurations um, in terms of, you know, titanium anodization colors. This one happens to be plain on the back side. They do have bronze and blue, what you'd expect. They also have full titanium variants um, that would obviously weigh a little bit more, and those ones come in bronze and blue, and I don't know. Do they come in green, or did Dr. Frunky just anodize his like, like he usually does? I'm not sure. Quick Google search is where I got that information. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall, so a little bit longer there. Also, uh, you can see exactly how slender this blade is. Uh, up against the Spyderco PM2. Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. Let's move this guy down here just a little bit. Up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue also coming in at 8 inches overall. So that's what you're looking at in terms of overall size. It's exactly the same length as a Benchmade Griptilian. Last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 coming in at 7 and a quarter inches. Let me go ahead and get my super fancy schmancy calipers here that cost an enormous amount of money. Not really. Very cheap calipers. I'm honestly looking into getting some new ones. A surprising 150 thousandths on the blade stock. Let me go ahead and do that again just in case because this thing is very cheap and zero. If you push zero, sometimes you get 0.1. That's why I do it twice. Yeah, see what's going on here? 130 thousandths, so which is it? Let's do it one more time. <laughs> oh, It's time for some new calipers. Holy moly. Let's put it up against the Spyderco Para th uh, PM2. We're coming in the same or slightly under the PM2. Call it 140 thousandths. We're going to do this one more time. I'm sure you guys are like, just move on. Uh, yeah, 140 thousandths is probably what I might have been clamping it in the wrong place. You can see up here, it's we got a little bit it's thick right here, and then it starts to taper. So maybe I was going in the wrong place. Uh, give me give you guys an example of the action here. You can tell, I'm sure, that this is a front flipper. I am nowhere near the first channel to review this thing. I've also found that you can deploy it <laughs> like this. Oops. <laughs> uh, permanent wound. Kyle. You are now responsible, your knife is now responsible for a permanent wound in my background that will be there forever. Great. <laughs> Just cover that up. No, I'm kidding. Um, anyways, uh, this is a front flipper that can be deployed like this if you want to do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend deploying it the way that it's supposed to be deployed. I'll admit that it took me a few tries with this knife to get it right, but once I figured it out, and it's a matter of keeping your hands off of the lock bar so more you know like kind of a cat's paw and then you come up here and you break that detent and it deploys and it actually works really really well this is one of the better front flippers that i've handled though i'll admit i have not handled a whole bunch that's that's called top flipping i, I guess is what i'm doing there and this is not meant as a top flipper that or i'm just really bad at it but anyways this is uh you know one of very few front flippers that i've actually handled um but uh, uh, I would say it's a good one. You know, I've, I, can, um, I can get that to deploy. Um, despite it being a really light, slender blade, it actually does have really uh, a good feeling pivot. It's very, very smooth, very luxurious feeling. 
Um, I get the impression that this is very new and hasn't been used very much, so um, I imagine it'll even break in smoother. It also, it's not the best at the reverse flick, but if you're wondering, you absolutely can just barely get your fingernail in there to deploy it. Though, I'll admit, it is much easier to just use the uh, thumb flick, absolutely. Let's go ahead and weigh this guy. Now, keep in mind, there's two versions of this at least, one in full titanium and one in carbon fiber, so this is gonna be the lighter of the two. Holy moly, 2.4 ounces. Hardly weighs anything. Yeah, 2.4 ounces. So considering you're getting three and a half inches roughly of blade at two, so the you know people who like to go by the um, weight to like an ounce an inch, the weight to blade length ratio, um, yeah, this is excellent. Makes sense though, considering we have not an overly thick blade, but a very, you know, it's, it's not very tall. So you have this very slender profile throughout. One side is solid carbon fiber. I keep wanting to deploy this with the thumb stud. One side is solid carbon fiber. You can see there are no liners, and the other side is solid titanium. They didn't mill it. They didn't have to mill this out at all, and they came up with 2.4 ounces. Could they have milled it and shaved off another 0.4 ounces and made it two ounces? Yeah, but it's trivial. Honestly, at this size and profile, that additional removing that uh, amount of additional weight, in my opinion, is trivial. Um, let's go ahead and go over the anatomy of this knife. What we have here on this knife is a tumbled. Oh boy, we've got. We've got the gosh darn phone not set to airplane mode, so I'm receiving text. Sorry if you guys heard a buzz. Anyways, a tumbled, fully flat ground uh, blade. This I'm hesitant to call this a drop point blade. Would you call this a clip point blade? I mean, technically the clip would start all the way back here. Call it what you will. Um, the blade has a good amount of belly. It doesn't start, you know, it's, it's not super tall. And at 140 thousandths at this height, you don't come down to the thinnest edge, but it does come to a surprisingly thin edge. It's not going to be as lasery as the Spyderco PM2, but honestly, um, yeah, it comes down to a plenty thin edge. In terms of your general EDC tasks, this thing is going to handle it no problem. I think the blade is actually really handsome, and you know, the slot here, the way that they've got it sort of carved into, partially carved into the handle skills, it looks really nice. Uh, it's nicely chamfered all the way around. I even like the little dog logo there. This is an M390 blade for those of you who are wondering, so that's gonna make a lot of people happy. Moving down to the scales here, we do have beautiful carbon fiber scales with a couple of holes milled. I said that they weren't milled out, but technically there's some speed holes in there, so you've got a little bit of milling in the carbon fiber, probably more for aesthetic reasons than weight uh, reduction reasons, given that how light given how light carbon fiber is to begin with. The carbon fiber itself looks very, very nice. It's obviously real carbon fiber and obviously carbon fiber all the way through. You do have a pivot that is decorative on the front, front side and then you have a plain Jane um, Torx pivot on the back for easy adjustments, really great there. Nice chamfering all the way around, nice rounding. Feels really, really nice, nice and smooth, no issues there. Coming down to the screws here, we do have screws that, oh no, no, I'm sorry. These are T6. Can we get hashtag, what, what's, what's, a good, uh, what's a good hashtag to start this? Uh, uh, Super Steel Steve and I were talking about this the other day. Um, <laughs> hashtag get rid of T6. I hate, is this T6? Is that what that is? I think, if I remember correctly, it's, it's T6. Just at least one size up, just universally across the board. I hate that little tiny size. Ugh. Not that big of a deal though. I'm 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 crying about it, but it's not really that big of a deal. It's not a game. It's not a deal breaker for me. I own a lot of knives in that tiny size. Um, moving down here, you can see there is an area for you to fit some 550 through pretty easily. That area is um, actually the backspacer, which is in a gear pattern. That's my favorite type of backspacer. Really, really nice. Moving around to this side, you can see we have a pocket clip that fits the theme and overall profile of the knife really, really well. I always do this, you guys can't see me do it because I do it off camera, but yeah, you can get this knife in and out of your pocket with one hand really easily. You have that nice area down here underneath the clip that's gonna grab nice retention. The blade is held right here. There's hardly anything sticking up out of your pocket. I mean, because the blade profile is so thin and actually, it looks like this is one of those pocket clips that, yeah, you can see underneath there. It's one of those pocket clips that's held in by a screw on the inside. Uh, that is way too bright. <laughs> uh, let's see. Change, the, there we go. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's a little tiny screw on the inside there. Can you guys see it? That's what's holding in the pocket clip so you don't have a screw on the outside of the clip. Is it necessary? No, it does make the, it does make it look nice. Uh, I don't think it's one where I'm like, I, I need to have that on every single knife moving forward. 
Now, but it is cool. The pocket clip looks cool, it looks stylish, it goes with the theme of the knife. This is a knife that I, you know, honestly could see myself carrying in a suit uh, jacket or, um, you know, like really, really nice pants or something, just given its overall slender profile. And I like how modern and um, sleek and attractive it looks. It's really cool. You do have a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. You can see here that it's locking up at, I don't know, 35%, something like that. Absolutely solid up, down, left, and right. I'm really, I'm always impressed when a little tiny knife like this has solid lockup because I feel like, you know, if I really wanted to, I could pull this blade over and, and break it, but I don't think that's the case. I think it's a lot more solid than uh, it actually is. And on top of that, this isn't the type of knife that I would call hard use. You know, a lot of people feel like the more money they pay for a knife, the more durable it should be. Some people think like that, but then you should buy knives that are more expensive and a build type that is more durable or emphasizes durability. This knife, what you're paying for, is something that has an amazing carry profile, an amazing blade length to weight ratio, a nice sleek modern design, and utilizes really, really nice materials. Um, it's accentuating all of those factors really, really well, absolutely. So this is a premium knife. It comes with a premium price tag. This particular Blade HQ exclusive version, which right now people are always telling me to add links. I will add links in a situation where it is not uh, located at one of the most common retailers. Most people by now know um, your common retailers. Your most common retailer is gonna be Blade HQ and there's also Knife Center. And then all of us have a whole bunch of other little tiny retailers that we like to use. Um, another large retailer that I like to use is DLT Trading. I also like to go to USA Made Blade. Um, there's a whole bunch of other places that we all look at, but basically what I'm saying is I will leave a link if number one, it's available at the time of this video, and number two, it's in a place of obscurity, meaning if it's a uh, an exclusive to a certain um, dealer, uh, or if it's something that's weird and not offered at the common places, I'll do that. But otherwise, you guys can just check Blade HQ or Knife Center like everybody else and see if you can find it. If it's sold out, then it's sold out. I don't have a secret location that I get these knives. I shop at the same place as everybody else. This particular version, as far as I saw, runs $220 on Blade HQ. The titanium version, curiously, actually costs less. Um, that adds a confusing element to things because I remember thinking definitively that anything that was full titanium will always be more expensive than things that are titanium and carbon fiber. However, depending on what manufacturer you buy from and what model it is, sometimes the carbon fiber variant costs more than titanium. Eh, it makes it hard to judge whether or not this is a good knife for the money. Truthfully, like a lot of things on this uh, channel, I feel like it's just a tad bit overpriced, but that's my internal mental bias against like a knife, that, a knife that feels so slender and tiny, no matter how refined, for whatever reason, just does not equate to that type of cost in my head. That's an unfair bias and it doesn't make any sense. The truth is, is the materials that it are made out of, that it's made out of, uh, the action, the refinement, you know, all of that stuff are indicative of a knife in the 200 to $220 price range, at least knives that I have judged previously on this channel as an appropriate price. So do I think that's a good price? I guess so. Uh, me personally, I would probably go for the titanium one because you can get it for 20 bucks less, right at $200. Um, I think uh, for people looking for something that is a slender profile, a light carry, and obviously something that has a unique element of fidget factor to it, definitely. Let's talk about that deployment there. Is that deployment get, give, uh, gaining, um, giving you some sort of advantage in utility? No. Um, is it different? Yes. Is it different in a good way that's unobtrusive to the rest of the knife? Yes. Um, one of the nice benefits of this is um, you uh, gain the ability to flip the knife out or deploy it without there being a thumb stud or a flipper tab that hangs off this way. Because the excess material that's required for that tab so that you can flip it out is located on the top of the knife, you still, the entire profile is no wider than this, you know? Um, and there's nothing in the cutting path to get in the way. So that's kind of cool. I will say, for me, at least not being used to front flippers, it, I, it requires one extra brain cell. When I pull it out of my pocket, I have to think about it for one extra second and put my hands in a position that's just ever so slightly foreign to me that I feel like there's just ever so slightly more of a chance that I might drop it. Drop it. However, it is designed well enough that I feel like if I played with it long enough, it probably wouldn't be an issue. This is a great knife. Um, I'm not completely sold personally on the idea of needing a front flipper, but it is nice and fidgety. People who like to play with their knives are gonna like that. Um, it, is a, it is a reliable form of deployment. It does work well. I do not like these little tiny screws. 
Um, other than that, though, boy, I uh, I don't know that there's a whole lot to uh, complain about. You know, you could use this for basically the uh, the eighty percent of us, the everyman who just like to carry pocket knives and use them for everyday tasks. Yeah, this is going to be awesome, and it's going to be fun to play with, and it's nice and lightweight. Um, really, really cool. Can I recommend this knife? Yeah, a hundred percent. Wish it was a little bit less expensive, just a little bit, like twenty bucks less. Um, I wish the carbon fiber and titanium variant were both the same price. Um, right at 200 feels right, it's my intuition, but my intuition is sometimes is not accurate. Um, if this looks good to you and you're wondering, is it made well? I'm ready to spend the money on it, but is it made well? Yeah, it's made well. If you're looking for this type of knife, you're probably going to be happy with this, uh, this exact version. So Kyle, thanks again for letting me take a look at this. Um, this is really, really cool. That's pretty much all I have to say about this knife. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to take a look at my other videos, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.